Hello, and welcome to another segment of Active Living. Today, we've got our wonderful uh, ONTV staff here, Joe Johnson. And Joe is uh, just returned from a trip from ca to California. That's right, and, my second uh, one this year. <laughs> one, of it, one of his best hobbies, I think, is going out and trying to find movie stars, trying to find movie locations, those exactly. types of things. And he's just returned from a great trip. Tell us about your trip there, Joe. Well, the fun thing about this particular trip is that a friend of mine came with me. His name's Ryan. He, had, he has never been to L.A. before. Okay. So I wanted to give him the ultimate L.A. experience in the span of a week. So touching down at LAX, climbing into our rental car, the very first stop on our trip was Venice. Um, and I love Venice Beach, the boardwalk. It's just full of colorful characters and artists and musicians and skateboarders. And uh, so I had to show him that right off the, the, the bat. And you can see in these photos, like in the top right corner um, and even the top left corner, there are artists along the boardwalk that provide these photo opportunities. They okay. set up these works, works of art that you can pose with. Uh, the bottom right corner, this was a first for me. Uh, I've never visited the Venice canals before. I didn't even know there were canals out there. Yeah, and a lot of people don't. Do you know at one time, the, the, the way Venice got its name is that most of the streets were canals like in Italy. Okay. And then over time, they paved over most of them, but there's still an area in Venice that has canals just like in Italy. Fantastic. And so I found them for the first time, walked along them, and, and you feel like you're in a different world. Um, it feel like, feels like you're on the other side of the planet. Really? Um, so it was a new experience in Venice, and uh, it was just great. A lot of fun. It looks like it was a... It, it does look a little bit like Venice. Yeah. Except right now, Venice is kind of underwater. Oh, that's right. Seen that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might be a good idea to go to California. Right, right. Uh, but you see people in paddle boats and stuff in the canals. It was really spectacular. It's great. Yeah. You know, and I assume that the... Uh, the water's fairly clean. It's not yeah. like uh, Venice over in Italy where it's not, not quite so clean. No, it's all <laughs> pretty clean. It's clear. You can see yeah, the bottom. It was, uh, it was pretty awesome. And there's bridges where you can cross and pretty awesome. So when you got out to the beach, did you see all these guys, you know, lift, lifting weights and all Over that at kind of Muscle stuff? Beach, there's still guys there that lift weights. Yeah. Not like it was in its heyday when Hulk Hogan and Arnold Schwarzenegger used to work right. out there. Right. But, yeah, you still see the, uh, the muscle bomb guys okay. there at Muscle Beach. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we hit, uh, I want to say, five different beaches over the course of the week. One of my favorites is Redondo. Um, not only is the beach beautiful, but they have this incredible pier with shops and restaurants. And there's a part of the pier uh, called the, the Redondo Fun Factory. And you walk into it, and it feels like you're stepping back into time. Uh, there's a tilt-a-whirl ride you can go on. You, you can see there's skee-ball, there's old-fashioned arcade games, right. and things you could knock down with a baseball and guess your weight and all that stuff. And uh, so Redondo Beach and Pier is one of my favorite locations in Southern California. Just like going to an old-fashioned fair, right? Yeah. You know, we used to have those fairs come through Vermont yeah. when I lived up there, and you'd have the tilt-a-whirls and, the, you know, all, the, all yeah. of this stuff. Now, that's there permanently. Unfortunately, there's a big sign over the entrance that says, looks like they're going to be closing shop in December of 2019. Forever. I don't know why. I don't know if the lease is up. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but you only have about a year left to get to the Redondo Beach Fun Factory. Really? So, yeah. Kind of sad. I'm going to miss it. Um, in Beverly Hills, there's a place called the Paley Center, um, and uh, on display in the lobby were numerous props from various movies that are going to be auctioned off in December uh, by Profiles in History, and some of these props are some of the most iconic props in movie history. Here's a little uh, collage here, top left corner are the two gold angels that appeared on top of the Ark of the Covenant in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Really, wow. Below that, the hoverboard from Back to the Future. Um, in the middle there, Captain Kirk's uh, shirt from the Star Trek TV series. Wow. And any guess uh, who wore that red dress in the top right corner? How about Marilyn Monroe? And Marilyn Monroe. They, they hey. had a <laughs> display of her clothing, and uh, all of that's going to be auctioned off. The white, uh, the white gown when she was standing over the... Well, they had, they <laughs> had a version of the white gown. Apparently, okay. the one that actually appeared in the film is in somebody's private collection, okay. but they have what was called a promotional gown that Marilyn Monroe wore. Okay. 
Okay. And that was on display as well and uh, up for auction. So you could own a piece of Maryland. Um, so yeah, all kinds of cool props. Probably my favorite is in the center column at the bottom, uh, Luke Skywalker's original lightsaber from the first Star Wars all movie. All right, yeah. How cool is that? Right. I felt like a little kid. <laughs> so it was really neat to see uh, authentic props. What's this from Jaws movies. thing over on the right there? Um, that is Steven Spielberg's slate from the movie that he used when directing Jaws. Okay. Um, somehow it wound up in somebody's hands and they're putting it up for auction. Yeah, we were out there one time and we, we actually saw the, the Jaws. Yeah. The mechanical Jaws. At Universal Studios. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it comes uh, out of the water. That was yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That's neat. Uh, one of the things I love to do in, in L.A. is go to the comedy clubs. Uh, because all the comedians uh, live in L.A., you could see some of the biggest names in comedy perform any given night. Uh, tickets are usually $15, $20 to see some of the biggest names. Wow. Uh, one night when we went to the improv, uh, Chris D'Elia, who's a big name in comedy, Kevin Nealon, who used to be on Saturday Night Live, and Judd Apatow, who's a director who also does stand-up comedy. And he was taking questions from the audience, and I got to ask him a question about a documentary that he made. So him and I are having a conversation while really? he's standing on oh, stage. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And then uh, Kevin Smith, who's also a writer-director, uh, he does a weekly podcast at the Improv. So my friend Ryan and I sat in the audience and watched him record his podcast, and they went like two hours, and it really? was so entertaining. It was a lot of fun. Was it mostly comedy on the, uh, the, the, the they podcast? They talk about current events, and they talk about the uh, films, upcoming films, and, and things happening in their yeah. life. So it's just kind of a hodgepodge of different things that they talk about. I don't suppose they talked about politics at all. A little bit. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, you know Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> right. They can be kind of political, so... Uh, here's another beach that I just absolutely love. It's the Leo Carrillo State Beach in Malibu. Ooh, uh, nice. So beautiful. Uh, several films uh, shot scenes there, including Grease uh, and The Karate Kid. And uh, I don't know if you remember a little movie called Beach Blanket Bingo with Annette Funicello. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. They filmed right. there. And sure. so it's a, it's a popular filming destination. Yeah. And as you can see from these photos, it's just beautiful and scenic and you stumble onto starfish and right. uh, seals and dolphins, and uh, it's a really beautiful beach to visit. I think I was out there about, oh, it had to be at least 40 years ago. Yeah. That's the last time I was there. Yeah, you got to get back. My father had a friend that lived out there, and uh, so we got to go and, go and visit with him. Yeah. He was a, uh, a pilot for, for uh, Flying Tigers airplanes. Oh, wow. So he was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a location I haven't visited in 30 years. Last time I was at the La Brea Tar Pits, uh, it was 1989. Uh, and so we went back and I felt like a little kid. Really? Uh, I get a kick out of the La Brea Tar Pits. There's the actual tar pits outside that are still oozing tar. Really? Uh, but then there's a museum where they, they have on display all the fossils and skeletons that they've pulled out of these pits. Oh. Uh, mastodons and saber-toothed cats, uh, dire wolves. They said they found something like 1,500 dire wolf skulls. Really? And they had about, a, about 150 of them on display. Um, but when they started, I guess back in the day, they would use those, the tar that was oozing from these pits to pave roads and do stuff right, like that. Right, and right. as they were excavating, they were pulling out large sections that were full of bones. And they said, what is going on here? Well, how did they get in there? I mean, did they just stumble in there? Yeah, well, uh, throughout, throughout history, those tar pits have been oozing this right. black, sticky tar. Right. And so maybe thinking it was a pond or something, a mastodon would go in, get stuck. Okay. And then the cats and the wolves would come to feed on the mastodon. And they would, and get, they would stuck. get stuck. <laughs> yeah, right. And so it's just bones upon bones upon bones that they've pulled out of these pits. It's really remarkable. Wow. So it was, it was really neat to see. Uh, Randy's Donuts. Who doesn't love Randy's Donuts? It's iconic with the giant donut sitting on on top of the building. Right. A long line of people waiting to get to their donuts. It was the first time I've ever been there, and uh, I tried the Fruity Pebble Donut, and it was outstanding. It was <laughs> fruity a pebble. big donut with frosting <laughs> on it and fruity pebbles mashed on top. It might have been the best donut I've ever had. Sounds in my great. <laughs> Randy's Donuts, I recommend it. You ought to take that whole concept and bring it back here. Yeah, I think we can use that. <laughs> Make a few bucks. Uh, one of the main reasons I went out to L.A. was to attend the uh, L.A. Comic Con. Uh, they usually have celebrities make appearances, and one actor that I was really looking forward to seeing was Jack Black. 
Uh, so that's Jack Black and Kyle Gass. Uh, together they, they form sort of this comedic rock duo called uh, Tenacious D. But of course everyone knows Jack Black from his movies. Sure. He was in Jumanji and School of Rock. Right. Uh, Nacho Libre, which is one of my favorite movies. So they came out, they did a presentation for the crowd, did a Q&A. That was a lot of fun seeing him in person. Did they do comedy or just Q&A type Q &A of thing? Just Q&A and yeah. just uh, talked about projects they were working on. Oh, that's kind of uh, cool. Really informal. It was kind of yeah. neat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of the TV show Mythbusters. Have you ever seen Mythbusters? Oh yeah, Busters? absolutely. Uh, so this is Tori Belleci who was making an appearance at uh, the Comic Con. So I got to do a little interview with him Fantastic. and sit there and just chit chat with him for a little bit. It's great. And I uh, got a photo opportunity with him. Uh, Mythbusters is one of my favorite shows. Oh, I used, I I used to watch it all the time. And, but I don't watch it anymore because I don't have cable anymore. Well, the, I cut the cable. The original <laughs> people are all gone. Um, yeah. Uh, Adam and Jamie and Tori and Carrie and Grant, they're all oh, they're gone. all gone. Um, they brought on some new people, and I don't watch it anymore since okay. the originals left. So you're not missing anything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a great show. Uh, this is the very first time I've ever got to hold a real Oscar statue in my hands. Wow. Uh, I thought it might have been just a prop or a dummy, um, but then I looked at the inscription and it was an uh, Oscar for like a Warner Brothers animated short or something. Okay. So it was the real deal. It was a real Oscar. And wow. uh, if you take the, the Warner Brothers uh, studio tour, at the end of the tour, they offer you a chance to hold an Oscar in your hand. Wow. How cool is that? And it's heavy. It's a lot heavier than I imagined. Uh, speaking of the Warner Brothers tour, one of the last stops on the tour is to visit the Central Perk set from the TV show Friends. Uh, yeah. The couch is original to the TV show. All the props and everything you see there are all original. They decided to maintain the set and keep it up for visitors. So uh, at the tail end of the Warner Brothers tour, you get to, uh, to get a photo op on the Friends couch. That's great. Pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Warner Brothers, um, it's, a, it's a really fantastic tour, and I'm a big fan of the, the movie La La Land. Um, oh, so yeah. on the lot is the cafe that Mia worked at. Um, it's not decorated anymore from the movie, but it still maintains the color uh, from the film. So it was kind of neat to get pictures with it. Is it a real cafe or is it a no, just, just a front? A, it's just a, a front. You can go inside. Oh, there can. is an okay. interior, but it's it's not a functional building. Okay. It's just a, yeah. a movie set, basically. So on the bottom, you can see a scene from the movie, and there's me posing with it in the top. So Great. I love finding places like that. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a surprise at the end of the Warner Brothers tour, me and my friends were invited to sit in for a, a taping of a, a Conan special. Uh, Conan O'Brien recently traveled to Japan and he needed an audience laugh track for the video that he shot. Okay. So they brought us in, Conan was there, he showed us the video clips, we laughed, and they're going to use it on the special. Um, so you're going to be on Conan's special. That my laughter will That's be. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and the the bonus was well, this went pretty late in night, probably about nine o'clock California time. We were just about ready to leave, and Conan treated us all to a barbecue. So really? we stepped out of the studio to a giant cookout where he fed all of us hamburgers. Wow! <laughs> fantastic. So imagine being on the Warner Brothers lot, yeah. nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night eating burgers with the uh, with the, the audience. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds was great. That was totally unplanned and unexpected. How in the world do you get invited to this? Um, for that, we just, we, we happened to be exiting the Warner Brothers tour and a guy with a clipboard said, do you want to sit in on the special? So it was just being in the right place at the uh, right of time. Of course. <laughs> now <laughs> right. when he was doing his talk show, you, you had to apply for tickets and usually it was pretty right. easy to get them. But he's changing up the format of his show. He's not going to do a normal sit-down talk show anymore. So start. he's on hiatus right now. So starting, I think, in January, he's going to unveil a new format for okay. his show. So, yeah. All right. Uh, one thing you, a newcomer always has to do in L.A. is visit the Hollywood sign. And this is one of my favorite photos <laughs> ever. Oh, yeah. Well, me and my buddies <laughs> were goofing around. We were taking pictures of the Hollywood sign. And we saw this beautiful blonde with her retro glasses and capri pants. And so I approached her. I think her husband was taking pictures, her boyfriend. And I said, would you mind if I got a picture with her? And so we took several pictures in front of the Hollywood That's sign. And, and this is my favorite. That is I, a great picture. I, I think I might frame this one. I really like this one I a lot. I definitely frame that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, being the first time my friend Ryan ever visited Hollywood, he really lucked out 
we accidentally stumbled onto an active filming movie on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, the movie is uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Okay. We stumbled onto it, they let us watch, and not only did we see Quentin Tarantino, who you see pictured in the bottom right corner, but in that vehicle, that you, the white vehicle you see there, right. was Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my God, really? How cool is it to wow. stumble on to those guys filming scenes for this movie? That's great. And the crew was really nice to let us uh, stand there and watch and take pictures. They said no flash photography, right. but we got to watch them film for hours and hours. I think we ended up leaving there at almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they were shooting in the middle of the night, had the streets closed off and everything. Wow. Ha that was a big thrill. That was amazing. Oh, it would be. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> while we were there, we also got to sit in the audience of the Jimmy Kimmel Show. In that circle is me and my friend Ryan cheering on Jimmy Kimmel as he comes out to do his monologue. It's a very tiny studio, only maybe 200 people sit right. in the audience. Right. Um, and I think I have... Uh, the guest was uh, Jamie Dornan, who was in the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, right, and right, right. he has some other projects coming out, but that was his main guest. And then a big thrill for me was seeing uh, Willie Nelson perform. Uh, Willie was performing a song that ended up airing on the show about a week later. Uh, so he sang Fly Me to the Moon, right. and then uh, this new anthem he wrote called Vote Him Out. And uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, so you could see me in this photo. I'm the bald guy in the front row there, okay. in the bottom right. Oh, you got front row right. for Willie. Oh yeah, oh, right, man. right up uh, up close. We made eye contact and everything. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? No. Nah, uh, to find out that Willie Nelson was a musical guest, uh, he's a, such a legend. So yeah, awesome. oh, absolutely. So, so that was a highlight too. Uh, there's me at Hollywood and Vine, uh, posing in front of the Capitol Records Capitol building. Records, Definitely right. great photo opportunities on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. That used to be the most famous intersection in the world. Right. Um, uh, back at Warner Brothers, they have this amazing display of Batmobiles from all the Warner Brothers produced films from Batman Forever, The Dark Knight, uh, wow. Justice League, Batman Returns. Uh, so me, being a huge Batman fan, Imagine walking into a building and seeing every movie Batmobile on display. Wow. That was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, this is a really neat diner that I've always wanted to visit. I've driven past it many, many times. Finally got to eat in it for the first time. Uh, but it's a railroad car converted into a diner uh, right on Sunset Strip. Yeah, it's called Carnies. Yeah, they used to do that a lot back in the 50s. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. It saved yeah. your construction costs. Right. So. So there's photos of them moving this train car into location and turning it into a diner. And uh, it was a really neat place. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it looks great. Had a great uh, chili dog while I was there. Uh, this staircase is the staircase that all the stars climb on their way to the Oscar ceremony. Uh, this is the Dolby Theater right on Hollywood Boulevard. So every year when they have uh, the Academy Awards, the, the stars walk the red carpet, go up this set of stairs uh, into the theater. Wow. Uh, and it's pretty neat because on either side of the staircase, there are the names of all the best picture winners. And they have space for additional winners going in, going like another 50 years, oh, right? where they're gonna <laughs> add additional movie titles. So it's pretty neat to stand where all the stars go, you know. The Roosevelt Hotel, also on Hollywood Boulevard, a very historic hotel. A uh, famous swimming pool where Marilyn Monroe did her first photo shoot. Oh, really? Uh, she, she did a photo shoot for a suntan lotion on the pool's diving board. Um, but it's a beautiful hotel, lots of history. Uh, the very first Academy Awards ceremony ever held was held in this uh, hotel in their banquet room. Right. Uh, lots of photo ops, lots of history. Wow. Uh, if you're on Hollywood Boulevard, poke your head into the Roosevelt Hotel. They say it's haunted with Marilyn Monroe's ghost. Well, yeah. most hotels are, do have some kind of ghost, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this is my final slide. I encourage everyone to find your happy place. My happy place is Los Angeles and Hollywood. Um, this was my eighth trip to Hollywood. 
Uh, not counting the year I lived in the LA area back in 1990. I've been back eight times since. Wow. Every time I go, it's an adventure. I'm always running into celebrities and, like you said, finding locations right. and right. touring the studios, going to the beaches. There's just so much to see and do. It's, a, it's kind of a wild town, isn't it? It, it is. <laughs> and, you know, LA gets a bit of a knock for being kind of snobby or elitist. Right. And it's, I don't find it's that way at all. Everybody's friendly. You could approach anybody, start up a conversation. They right. have stories. I went to a really neat um, Italian restaurant and um, they said, oh, talk to the owner. So I chatted with the owner. I said, you got any stories? He goes, oh, yeah, Sinatra used to come in here all the time. Oh, is that right? And <laughs> he just was so talkative and had all these stories. And my friends and I are just taking it all in, yeah, just right, soaking right, it right. all in. He had a million stories to share. And think about that. You know, every restaurant, every every pub, every bar has stories about John Wayne and Dean Martin and <laughs> Frank Sinatra. All right. I eat that stuff up. I can't get enough of that. <laughs> Yeah. It's a great place to be. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so much to see and do. You you can't complain of being bored when you're in LA. Now, did you get did you get down to any of the other beach areas? We had I think a total of five beaches. So first day was Venice. We went to Redondo. Uh, we went to Hermosa Beach. Uh, we went to Santa Monica, which is spectacular. That okay. has the pier with the Ferris wheel oh, right, and all right. that. And then the last beach we hit was uh, the beach in Malibu. Um, and each one has its own unique characteristics that, that make it a must visit. And right. um, those were the main ones that I wanted to make sure my friend experienced. And every one of them was just great. And the people so so friendly and nice. Well, you know, I remember being out there a few years ago and being in one of those big, tall office buildings in the, mm -hmm. in the middle of town. Yeah. And uh, somebody said, hey, there's an earthquake going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I said, really? And, you know, you could, you could feel things shake just a little bit when it was a... But it was a five point something earthquake, but it was like, you know, 75 or 80 miles away. Yeah. So we didn't really get the full effect. Well, when I was lived cool. there, um, in, this is kind of a funny story. It was uh, 1990, I had taken some friends to Venice Beach and we saw some people gathered around a TV set and we walked up and we said, what's going on? They said, an earthquake, earthquake had struck. We said, well, we didn't feel anything. And they said, no, I was in Upland, California. Well, I was living in Upland, California at the time, or near Upland. Oh. And coincidentally, that same day, I met Drew Barrymore. She was hanging out at the beach with friends, and I recognized her, and I met her. And so that day when I met Drew Barrymore, the earthquake had struck. So at the end of the night, my friends and I go back to the town where I lived in, which was Rancho Cucamonga, which was near Upland. And all the stores were closed because everything had fallen off the shelves. They had to pick everything up off the oh, floor. Oh, right, right. And so the next morning, I was sleeping, and when I woke up, I was rocking back and forth. And being from Michigan, I was confused at first, and then I realized we were experiencing an aftershock. It right. was a pretty strong aftershock. Our pool in the apartment complex, you saw the waves. Right, right, right. And all the car alarms were going off. Well, and that was my one and only earthquake that I've ever yeah. experienced. So. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Well, Joe, we're getting pretty short on time here. Do you have any other wild stories you can tell us about your trip? Oh, th I, I think I covered everything Just about from everything. this trip. Um, it, we ran into probably a total of about 25 celebrities. Uh, I talk to people who've gone to L.A. who tell me they haven't even seen one. Uh, I saw 25 this time. Last time when I went in, in March, I saw 35 celebrities. Oh, man. Uh, so over the course of my visits, I've seen hundreds of celebrities. In now, what's, what's your plan for your next trip? Or do you have one? Um, I'll probably go again next year. But actually, next year I want to go to a city I've never been to before, and that's San Francisco. I've never been to San oh, Francisco. you love that. So what I might do next year is take some time off work and drive across country. Yeah. I think I might drive the northern route, go spend a few days in San Francisco, turn around and come back. So I'm sure I'll have some photos for you. When your I Ford convertible? That's right. Yeah, uh, there you gas go. isn't too good on that. I might have to get a Prius if I'm going to oh, drive okay. across country. <laughs> Even though it's tempting to drive across country in a convertible. Well, you take the old, you know, Route 66 across oh, that you know, with the convertible. That would be a real trip for you. That would be amazing. That yeah. would be great. All right. Well, listen, thanks for so much for uh, joining us on Active Living. Thanks for it's having me. It's a really interesting trip. And uh, hopefully you'll do it again. We can come back to the show and tell us more. All right. I'll be back. Thanks a lot, Joe.